What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Stevie the Black. That's S-T-E-V-E-E, the Black. I'm back, and I'm here to give you another top 10 list today. And uh, this list, um, first of all, is a top 10 heels in WWE history. And I decided to make this list because, obviously, as I've stated on the show, I'm a Roman Reigns fan. And in order for Roman Reigns to get over with the fans is for him to turn heel. The same thing goes for John Cena, except he's already over with the fans. It's just... We want to see a John Cena heel turn, you know. We we we, we really want to see it. I I, I want to see it. But um, so I did my research and came up with a list of the top ten best heels in WWE history. Also, I will be doing a top faces in WWE history. But before I start, I do like to say that I couldn't. Obviously, as you all know, I didn't do my SmackDown live review. I couldn't because of uh, this past week. Uh, Wednesday, I was busy. You know, between school and between house tours, you know, it, I just didn't have enough time to do it. But I got enough time today to do this video, and you can be sure that I'll have my SmackDown Live review next week. All right, so let's get right into this list of top 10 heels in the WWE, starting with number 10, the game himself, Triple H. Now, obviously, we all saw what happened on Monday Night Raw this past week with Triple H coming back and helping Kevin Owens win the title. We don't know what it means yet. Hopefully, he'll be on Raw to explain his actions. But, you know, if he's not, then... Which I think would be better for the story if he's not there. Because then we'll go, where is he? Why isn't he here? You know, why did he do what he did? And uh, Stephanie had to know something. First of all, he's the CEO of the company. And second of all, he's her husband. She's her, He's her husband. So, she had to know. Right? I think it's raining outside. Anyway, um, so Triple H, you know... He, we all know Triple H. We know, though, that he broke into the scene as Hunter Hearst Helmsley and everything. And he was a heel at that time when he debuted. And he was a cocky, I think it was a French guy or an English guy or something like that. He was cocky. But it wasn't until he became a member of DX that he broke out on his own. And uh, then uh, later on, uh, after Shawn Michaels got hurt, it's really when his career took off was because, you know... That's when he became heel. He took over DX. They became faces. But then he turned on DX and started dating Stephanie and became WWE champion and became did villainous things, you know. And one of the reasons why people don't like Triple H is because people believe that he buries them and stuff like that. And that he doesn't put anybody over and everything, which isn't true now. I mean, really, he puts he put over Daniel Bryan, which back in the day, you he probably wouldn't have done, you know. He's put over John Cena, Batista, and everything like that. But a lot of people still don't like him because, you know, he's just a company man. And he believe he, everyone believes he gets what he wants because he's married to Stephanie. I mean, if I was married to Stephanie, and Vince literally gave him the job of COO. So let's not forget about that. He literally was like, yo, what you going to come and work in the office with me? Huh? When you going to come work in the office with me? So he was like, all right, I guess I'll do it. You know, this is back when he was doing part-time and everything. Uh, so he was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll come in, see what I can do. And uh, he's been very successful, obviously, with his uh, work with NXT. Um, obviously, he's a 14-time world champion. Um, and, uh, yeah, for reasons like that, I mean, he was literally given the World Heavyweight Championship just because he was the number one contender. Today's thing, in today's WWE... Nobody will be given anything. They would have to earn it. And he was literally handed. Because Brock Lesnar doesn't want to defend the title. Or because the WWE Championship is now on SmackDown. I'm going to give you the World Heavyweight Championship. You don't have to earn it. But I'm just going to give it to you. Okay. So obviously that made people hate him even more. Plus with the fact that he was champion from like 2003 to 2005. Which people dub as the Reign of Terror. Because of how long and how no one would ever beat him. Goldberg had an opportunity. Shawn Michaels, Booker T, they all, Randy Orton, they all had an opportunity and they couldn't put him away. I think even Chris Benoit and he won it, but eventually Triple H got it back and it wasn't until Batista did it, that's when the finally the reign ended. But he is on the top 10, number 10 of the top 10 heels of WWE. So let's move on to number 9, which is Rowdy Roddy Piper. Uh... He was a big heel in the 80s, obviously, you know, with his talk show, Piper's Pit, where he would make fun of people. And obviously, his most famous one is when he was in there, I think, with uh, Jimmy Snuka. 
one where he cracked him in the head with the coconut. But it really wasn't until he feuded with Hulk Hogan that he became an even bigger heel than he was because feuding with Hogan, you, you were going to go right up to the top. Obviously, Hogan was going to beat you. But just feuding with Hogan, being in the same ring as Hogan was not was awesome, I guess. Whatever. So, it, it shot him up, really. And because of their feud, they, along with two other people, I can't remember their names at this time, main evented the very first WrestleMania. So, we have Roddy Roddy Piper to thank for that. Alright, so next, number eight, Ted DiBiase. You all remember the Million Dollar Man. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do the laugh, but I mean, if I can't, I can't do it that good. But you know, the Million Dollar Man, he would pick people out in the crowd. He'd be like, come on, if you do this certain thing, you know, I'll give you $100. I remember one time he gave this kid a job. If he could buy the basketball 15 times in a row, then he'd give him $500. And when he was on the 14th try, he kicked the ball away and that little boy started crying. That is how evil this dude was. Like, he, he was mean. And then, obviously, after he was done the match, he would stuff $100 bills in his mouth. Yo, man, I don't care if I lose the match. He going to stuff a $100 bill in my mouth. I'm taking that money and going and spending it, whatever. But, yo, win or lose, I'm getting money. So, you know, it ain't really matter to me. But, I mean, the WWE is at this time when WWE was, like, really into their characters. Where, like, if you saw them in public, they had to be what they were. Because people had to believe that wrestling was real. Because there was no internet at this time. So, WWE would actually do things to make people believe, give him money, give him first class and everything like that, so that he can continue on with his role, and he played it to a T. So, that is why he is number eight. Number seven on the list is good old HBK. I know what y'all were thinking. I thought, I, y'all thought I was about to say good old JR. But nah, Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid. Not only was he a heel in the ring, but he was a heel outside of one. The time that Shawn Michaels was at the top of the WWE, really, was late 90s really early 90s late 90s actually mid 90s i'm sorry about that but um you know obviously he he turned heel once he broke up uh his team with marty Jannetty and super kicked him and then smashed him through the glass and then he became the heartbreak kid and went all like that and the spiral tactics and it, it, it was great but you know obviously sean not only was he a jerk in the ring but he was a jerk in real life too because you know he was going through something inner demons and i actually think this is just from my standpoint, and I don't know if Sean's ever thought about it this way, but, you know, I have. First of all, if y'all don't know, I'm Christian, and I love the Lord as my, I accept the Lord, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So, but, um, just like Sean, but I think that the Lord had Sean injure his back, so that way he could come out and reach him. Now, God obviously does things that we don't understand, like, why would you have someone injure their back? And, you know, possibly lose their career and the thing they love to do, you know, or he could be paralyzed or whatever. And you said to bring him to you, to Christ, whatever. It just doesn't make any sense. But that's just the way he does things, you know. But I believe because he did that, Sean was able to see the error of his ways because, you know, he was going through a drug addiction and being a real jerk. Had he gone the way he was, he probably wouldn't be here today. But thankfully, because of that back injury, he saw the error of his ways, came to Christ. And because of that. He's a man of God, a man of faith today, and uh, we can all thank him for that. And I'm sure, and I'm, I'm and I know he's great for, for that. Like I said, I don't know if he's ever thought about it that way, but you know that just popped in my head just now. But anyway, we're not talking about Star Michael or Michael Sean, the man behind the character. We're talking about the character itself and how when he was human, especially in DX. I know he was healed, but he was super popular, just like the NWO. They were healed, but they were super popular, and they were making their company. Rise up and up and up and up and up. So obviously with him, you know, he was a uh, he, he was great as a heel man, and obviously he turned heel when he super kicked uh, uh, Hulk Hogan, and they had a match at SummerSlam. Obviously, I never I never seen that match. I need to see it. But obviously, I've heard Sean did a lot of overselling because Hogan was supposed to win that match. And then the next month, they were supposed to have a rematch. And Sean was supposed to win that match. But Hogan was like, oh, I can't do it. My back, my back, my back. Whatever like that. So, you know, Sean did a little humiliation of him and stuff like that. So, just to stab at you. Just to get a crack at him. Say, this is what you get. Anyway, so next, number six, Bobby the Brain Heenan. 
the original Paul Heyman, I guess you can just call him. He was the manager of the heels. He would always do everything dastardly to make sure the heels win and get the victories and everything like that. And he was very good at his job. Very, very good. Paul Heyman even said, you know, if it wasn't for me, him, I probably wouldn't even be here. Actually, he didn't say that, but that's what I think. But, uh, just, he, you know, not only was he good at helping his people or his clients or whatever win the matches, when it was time for him to take the punishment and get the hero's justice, he did it. Now, Paul Heyman doesn't do it now, but when he first came back a couple years ago, he was taking some hits. So, I mean, he doesn't do it now, but he also doesn't interfere in the matches now. He just lets Brock Lesnar do his thing. Brock Lesnar shouldn't need help, you know? He's Brock Lesnar. But, um... Yeah, he, he, he was a great heel, and, and there's nothing really more I can say about it. I mean, great heel manager, got the people over and stuff like that. I remember when he had... Uh, Andre the Giant, and I can't remember, I think it was King Kong Bundy with him, and they were of a group, I can't remember the group name at this time, but th that's how good he was, you know, and everything like that, so I remember that. Alright, next, number five, CM Punk. Now, there's two ways you can take this. He had two great heel turns. One was in 09 when he was shooting with Hardy, the other was in 2012 to 2013. That is when, we'll talk about each one. Let's talk about the 09 first. The 09 first is when he was a face at the time. And he cashed in, he cashed in his money in the bank on Jeff Hardy, who had just beat Edge, I believe, in a ladder match for the World Heavyweight Championship at Extreme Rules. Now, he started off as a face and being all respectful. But then after that, he kept saying, you know, I'm straight edge. You know, I'm clean. I'm better than you. And, you know, you're a drug addict and you know you drink and you have problems so that makes me better than you and he used that to a T and what he did was great but you know the kind of part I don't agree with but it was it was still great heel work on TV but punk see we're gonna bring back God up again he doesn't believe in God he's an atheist so he had no trouble with growing his hair out and growing a beard to resemblance Jesus you know obviously because he doesn't believe in him so you know and he played his character so well you know that that People like this old lady one time was like, "You're gonna burn in hell for your sins," which I'm not lying. She's not lying, but at that point, you had to know wrestling wasn't really real. But I'm just saying, yo, she was old lady, so I mean, she didn't use the internet like that. But still, but still, I'm sorry, sure, someone explained it to her. Hey, you know, this is really isn't real. You can calm down. But still, she went lying. But he used that to a T, and it, it, as a heel work, it, 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 it was perfect. It got under people's skin. It did its job. The second time he was heel, he was at the mountaintop, WWE champion. He was in the midst of his 432 or 33-day reign, and he turned on The Rock at Raw 1000 because, you know, he said the people weren't respecting him, and The Rock wasn't respecting him and everything like that, and he demanded respect. And not only that, not soon after that, he brought in Paul Heyman to be his manager, who is his real life friend. So that, along with his, I believe his 09 one was much, heel turn was much better than his 2012 one. Because he possibly could have, he was really popular, like maybe people couldn't get enough of him. But had he not turned heel, he probably could have replaced John Cena with the most sales. Matter of fact, he was having the most t-shirt sales at the time, so he was beating John Cena. But, I mean, I'm just saying... I believe his 09 one was better, but obviously it was for wrong reasons, but still not getting into that. All right, so number four, another time when we didn't have internet, I, I don't really know this guy, but his name is Classy Freddy Blassie. I believe that's how you say his last name. And he was one of the most hated people. Obviously, like I said, this was a time before the internet. And he played his role to a T as well because, again, this was no time when there was no internet. So people didn't know wrestling was fake. And this was a time when the wrestlers would go out and they would stay in their character. I mean... People would throw trash in the ring of him. People vandalized his car. People, I read that someone stabbed him. I don't know if he's dead now, but I mean, yo, man, I'm getting stabbed. Now. I'm like, yo, man, it's fake. It's fake. You ain't stabbing me. Not, I mean, I don't know how much money he was making, but getting stabbed ain't worth that much money, okay? Because then I have to use that money to pay for the hospital bill, and I got time to go to the hospital because I'm getting stabbed. But that's how good he was. And that's at that time when, you know, nobody knew that it was fake and they believed everything they saw on TV. I mean, even still now today, we know that it's not real, but we still buy into the characters. Now, we're not stupid and we know we're like, oh, come on now. What we think he is, five years old? No. 
But at that time, he capitalized on that and brilliantly. I mean, like I said, I don't care how much you're making. I ain't getting stabbed. I am not getting stabbed. I will flat out say it's fake. It's not real. It's just entertainment. It's just TV. Whatever. But you ain't stabbing me. So next we have Hollywood Hulk Hogan at number three. Now, obviously, this was a big deal, and you're thinking, well, really, what could top Hulk Hogan? Well, there's two more people who could top Hulk Hogan. We're going to get into that, obviously. But Hollywood Hulk Hogan at the time, he is obviously the face of wrestling because he's the one who legitimized wrestling. He's the one who put wrestling on the map, and he's the one who was obviously in the red and yellow and the whole eat your vitamin thing and everything like that where... Uh, he was popular with the kids, and when he left WWE, that's when the time his time had passed, and guys like Undertaker and Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart were coming up, dubbed the new generation. So he left in '93, and then '94 he went came to WCW, and he was doing the same thing. But by that time, his thing with the red and yellow was getting still, and people started to boo him because they didn't like it anymore. It was getting boring, and they didn't like it. So I believe it was that Bash of the Beach. He was the third man in the team of Nall, Hall and Nash, and he, together they formed the NWO, and people were, minds were blown up, like, dude, did he just turn heel? And it's for that reason why people want John Cena to turn him, because they're like, if Hulk Hogan can pull it off, imagine what John Cena could do. If uh, Hulk Hogan can pull it off, imagine what Roman Reigns can do, because that is the point of my making this video. Like. I, I'm all for Kevin Owens being the champion, but what if Triple H came and helped Roman Reigns win? People were booing him anyway, but if he had came on, he had helped Roman Reigns win, they're thinking, dude, this guy can't stand him, so why in the world did he help him? Why did he help him? And maybe he wants to be a company guy now. Maybe he's like, you know what, I've tried to do it my way, my way is not working, these people aren't accepting me, so can I go your way? You know, you were a 13 time, 14 time world champion. So, you know, him winning him would obviously make him a four-time world champion. The universal title would make him a four. And I'm for, I'm, like I said, I'm all for Kevin Owens being the champion. But imagine the damage that Roman Reigns can do. And then when Finn Balor comes back, he can beat him at WrestleMania. And it'll be just that much more perfect. But it will get him over. So when he eventually turns face, you can have Seth Rollins, who will be a top face by, by that point. And you can have Roman Reigns. Because, again, you don't just have to have one guy. I understand it works for John Cena. And I understand it works for Hulk Hogan. But in the Attitude Era, the best time to be a wrestling fan, we had multiple faces. We had Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. Okay. It was like this. Austin was a, was a 1. But The Rock was 1A. And then when Austin got hurt in 2000, The Rock jumped to the A. But then when also came back, they were both at a, they were both at a one or an a or whatever like that. Like neither could top the other because that's how good they were. They had two faces of the company at the time. You don't just have to be one guy representing the company. It could be multiple guys. <sighs> so anyway, the black he traded in the red and yellow for the black and white, and it was just something that worked. It was great. And again, it was something that nobody ever saw coming. You never believed that Hulk Hogan could be a heel because of everything that he's done and what he represented. But he did it, and it worked. Number two is the nature boy, Ric Flair. I mean, Hulk Hogan was like, heel turn was the best thing ever. But Ric Flair just is a heel. As my dad likes to say, there are certain people who can play a face, and there are certain people who can play heel. Ric Flair is that heel. Okay, if not, he probably almost probably almost set the standard. At my point. I mean, his nickname is the dirtiest player in the game. You can't have that nickname and not be a heel, you know? So, obviously, him being the dirtiest player, the 16-time world champion, though he claims it's more like 20 or something like that. But WWE's took it down to 16. I mean, we don't know. Eight-time NWA champion. Uh, the battles that he had with Dusty Rhodes. The way he cheated to always win. And obviously, you know, the limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling dealing. Uh, steal your girl, I'll take whatever I want, all that stuff. So, he had the look, he played the part, it, it was just great. Obviously, he's number two. But now I know what you're thinking. Who's number one? Who could possibly be the number one heel in the company? Well, that's the man who owns the company himself, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. I mean, really, if you think about it. 
who could have be the top heel of the company if not Vince McMahon? And his war with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which represented the working man and the boss, which you want to do to your boss. Heck, I want to do to my boss. Well, okay. I used to want to do to my boss. My boss and I are kind of cool now. But before, you know, I really wanted to give him a stunner, crack over some sodas, and just go, I don't drink beer, so I have to use soda. But, you know, I mean, now obviously, me and my, like I said, me and my boss are cool. But, you know, at the time, there was a time that I did want to do that. But back to the story. So Vince McMahon, obviously, you know, since he was the boss, it's not like Triple H where they can come up with something that Vince literally is the boss of the company. So he can put on matches. He can use his money to buy people and say, hey, go get this guy. Go do that. Go do that. Go put in this match. But Vince, just like Bobby Heenan, did the job when he needed to do it. He let Austin beat him up a couple, I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times the man got stunned. How many times Austin humiliated him, just did all this stuff to him. Vince McMahon, in my mind, is the number one heel in WWE history. Because you really can't top the boss being the heel. You really can't. And obviously, the man's not a full-time wrestler. He never was. But, again, who can be the number one heel? If you think you got someone who's better heel than Vince McMahon in WWE history, let me know in the comment section down below. But, with every heel, there's a face. With every black, there's white. And I'm going to be doing my top ten faces in WWE history, so stay tuned for that. So, if you're not down with that, I've just got two words for you. Peace out.